and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, Brad Heinick, physical therapist. Hi, I'm Chris, the pharmacist. And today we are, well, actually Bob is on a little hiatus. He's taking the day off. So boy. we are going to do this. Chris and I, you've seen Chris before. He has excellent information, presents himself well, much better than Bob or I. And the title of today's video is Understanding Cramps, Stopping and Preventing Them. We've got some updated science and we've got some good information how you can stop cramps when they start and perhaps on how you prevent them. It's uh, inf real interesting information. You'll want to know all of it. But before we go any farther, Chris, are you ready? I'm ready. That's right. We actually have a giveaway. Believe it or not, uh -huh. it is a big giveaway. Look at the size of this. This is only a sample of a mattress. It's a sleep ovation mattress. Bob and I both have them. We absolutely love them. They have 700 tiny mattresses. They have airflow that keep you cool, and they're just a wonderful, delightful mattress. So let's get rid of that, Chris. Oh, uh, we got to oh. carry on. Yes, we do. I'm doing Bob's part. Not quite as good as Bob, All but right. anyways... To get to the giveaway, go to bobandbrad.com, go to the giveaway section, fill in the information, and you could possibly win this mattress, or go to Facebook. Uh, the, it's the Facebook, isn't it? There you go, the Facebook. That's you know right. It. It's, it's all over the internet. There's a little thing up above. Click on that to get to it. Also, you can go to uh, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I think there's the, another one. Even there? the TikTok, I the think. The TikTok, there absolutely. And now we have podcasts, which we're going to do a podcast on diabetes next. It's coming up with great information on that. Now, ready? Yep. One, two, three. Whoa. All right. There have a seat. All right. How'd that go, Chris? I felt pretty good. You felt good? Yeah. Tanner, did that go? I did okay. I can almost use a nap on right. elevation mattress. So cramps. Pretty much everyone has experienced painful cramps. I think I'm safe in saying that. Some people more than other, others. Uh, oftentimes they're induced by exercise or Correct. excessive fatigue. Other times they just come on for no apparent reason. Uh, so Chris got his desk out and he commenced <laughs> on researching this to the nth degree. We're going to come up with what he has to tell us. And then we're going to, I'm going to tell you some things I've worked with my patients on Absolutely. over the years, what's been the best solution to prevent and stop them once they start. So cramp, it's when a muscle contracts yep. into tetany, yep. tetanus, and that, that, and that that's when a no. muscle contracts yep, to correct. the maximum. Uh, very painful, oh, and it's, awful. it's not done volitionally. In other words, your brain isn't telling that muscle to cramp. It just happens. Uh, Chris, can you explain yeah. a little more on that technically? You know, cramps but are, don't bore the you – know, no, I won't. No, my no. eyes get glazed all over. Right, not a problem. <laughs> you can throw the flag. No, I mean, cramps are awful. I mean, we've all experienced them in one level or another. And it's young or old, you can get them. It doesn't seem to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, what we do know is that cramps are a byproduct seemingly of fatigue, and dehydration are probably the two most prominent causes okay. that we're going to see. So not enough water. Not enough water, not enough electrolytes. So you could throw diet in there to a lesser degree probably. Sure. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, and it can be age-related. You're going to see it. You know, as we get older, we lose some muscle mass. So if we're standing all day, working all day in the yard, mm -hmm. we don't have as much muscle mass to support our bodies. And so uh, as a result, of it, it just creates more fatigue on the muscles. So then when you're sitting in the chair at night, watching some TV, reading a book, or when you're sleeping, sure. all of a sudden, boom, you got that cramp yep. and, and it'll, it'll wake you up in the dead of night and it is miserable. Yes. So uh, I, you may even, I mean, you kind of holler a little bit. Yeah. You might say some magical words. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's different from magical thinking, but it's uh, it, either way, not fun stuff. And so what, what, what do we do? I mean, it, you know, it's one of those things where there's not a lot that really they happen. You can't, they're not really a lot of preventive maintenance, but what we can do, or at least what we found is, you know, we can do some light stretching maybe before bed. We can yeah. do, you know, but that's hydration. Nice. I wanted to talk okay. about All right. All right. <laughs> so really the bottom line is the research has no definitive answer. There's no, it, it really comes, it's a byproduct of fatigue. It's a byproduct of hydration. And, you know, there can be a couple other things, you know, maybe some hypothyroidism. People or say pregnancy. eat a lot of bananas, get the potassium in your system. Yep, potassium definitely seems to be something okay. that's beneficial. There are some correlative studies that talk about magnesium supplementation because, sure. I mean, you're going to have your electrolytes, you're going to have sodium. Yep. You're going to have your potassium, you're going to have your calcium, you're going to have your magnesium. And so they all kind of introduce, I mean, they're all part of the action potential of the muscle to make the muscles contract and relax, contract and relax. Sure. And, you know, when we have that, you know, the muscle is just in a hyper contracted state when we get there. 
And it seems like if we're not getting enough fluids and maybe we've sweated out too much of our own salts or our electrolytes, right, you know, right. it becomes an operative problem. Mm -hmm. So if we can, you know, supplement that through our daily diets, and there's a couple things we'll go into as we go further into this okay. about what to do to prevent yeah. as much as we can. So as far as, you know, my experience in the clinic, I, and personally, the, pro, and from what I've read too, it all seems consistent, uh, the biggest muscle groups that cramp are in the legs yep. uh the the toe the muscles in the toe and the bottom of the foot that make your toes curl is pretty p common oh those hurt yeah <laughs> I mean, okay the calf muscles and the that hamstrings uh and the quads as well but probably the hamstrings yeah, are hamstring. more yeah. uh, on top of the list so we are going to focus more on those because uh we're, i think we're safe on saying that's covering the majority i think so yeah absolutely um so anyways what I've had with elderly people in particular, that that's the people that in the clinic that have come to me and say, I get these night cramps. Sure. Uh, and say your calf cramps. So what happens is your toes are going to plantar flex or go down because those muscles cramp. Uh, when you get that, it's very painful. The first thing you have to do is dorsiflex or pull that foot back up. Now, this is very uh, awkward in bed to reach up, especially if you're older, to reach your toe and pull back. I so, have been dead asleep. Pardon me? When you're sleeping. Too. Yeah, yeah. So I suggest to them you need to get out of bed safely. You know, if your balance is off, you know, have something there. If you have a walker possibly or, you know, the wall yeah. would depend on your situation. Be safe, but get up and put your body weight through that to stretch it. Uh, it seems to work the best. Uh, it's easier than pulling on it. And you're going to stretch it. As soon as you get it stretched out, in other words, a foot from plantar flexion to the neutral position, the pain should start to lessen. Then you can bring your foot behind you, you know, hold on to the bed or your dresser and start to dorsiflex or bring the ankle up even further you can push your ankle your knee forward to stretch it more and by that time the pain should be gone this i mean it may be painful but you won't have that severe cramp pain and you're going to hold it there don't let it go back and cramp right away try and hold it give it a stretch walk around a little bef before you go back to bed uh and so you've had it stretched and like one thing that can trigger a cramp is uh, I know Chris and I were discussing this. We have the same symptoms, and I think a lot of people do. If you stretch and yawn in bed, and you kind of like think you're stretching your legs because it feels better, those are times where you can get those quadriceps, those calf muscles, and the toe cramps where your toes curl under. Um, I'll talk about toe cramps because they're very painful. Yep, yep. I usually get them swimming. Yep. When you push off the floor, not many people swim laps, no, but I get them quite a bit. Uh, yeah. But anyway, swimmers get them a lot. But if you get them and your toes curl down like this, this is one of those things where it's, I think it's easiest as long as you can get to your foot, if you can reach it to get on those toes and just stretch them the opposite direction, the best you can and, and work on that, you know, and this includes a family member, anybody right. around can help you if they know what to do. Um, I thought it interesting. I got uh, certified in uh, scuba diving last year, and you have to learn how to stretch someone's legs in the water in with water. your gear right. on. Wow. So you I can, bet that's kind of tricky. It's not so bad once you get used to how to work your BC, but that's be, that'll be another yeah. video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe underwater filming. Yeah. Exciting. So you need to stretch that. And the hamstrings, you know, it's the tendency is – it's going to want to pull your knee up and flex it. You've got to do whatever you can. And if you've got someone there to help, if you can lay on your bed, why don't you lay down, Chris? Okay. Flat on my back? Uh, on your stomach. On my stomach. Uh, oh, there we go. So if you're, do you wear your jeans to bed, Chris? <laughs> well, <laughs> So if it's cramping, it's pulling. If the person can lay on their stomach and someone else can Go here and push, 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 push. And when you get this out to here, that cramp should relieve, okay? If you don't have someone to help you, uh, then you're going to need to do what you can to straighten that leg. If you're laying, want to go on your back, Chris? Sure. Because oh, you get these. Oh, yeah. And what, what do you do to relieve yours? Scream? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I, I try to stretch as quickly as I can. I mean, it's, it's what, what technique do you do in bed? Well, I get out of bed as quickly as I can. Okay. Because for me, it's like whether it's my calf or my hamstring, those are my two most common cramping points. Yep. But um, with my hamstring, 
actually what I found is that I'll get my foot up on my bed yep. and then I'll just just lean into it. So if you can imagine me standing, I'd have my foot on the bed and oh, I would just you're, you're like this. Yep, and then I just this gently stretch. yeah, it's yep. gentle, but I, I take and then I'll walk. So if you're doing this just from my point of view, think about keeping your back straight and leaning forward. You'll get a more aggressive stretch a little quicker as opposed to rounding. When you're in this kind of pain, you probably are not going to think about that. No. So, but just get over and stretch it out the best you can. Again, balance is an issue. If if you're not stable on your feet, this is not going to be an option. Um, if you're lying in bed, uh, can you bring go, do this stretch where you go underneath and straighten yep. the knee? Okay. You know, if you can do this and straighten that knee out and uh, do the best you can and get it that cramp relieved. So, okay. All right. Woohoo. Wow. So, um, very good. I think for, was there anything else that you wanted to cover? Well, I think, you know, one of the things is, you know, we're in summertime now. So a lot of people are out there in the heat and enjoying, you know, exercising, being more active and mm -hmm. certainly doing things. So, you know, one of the overlooked things a lot of times is hydration. So we want to make sure we're drinking plenty of fluids. Right. Water is ideal, but, you know, some people like sports drinks. And, you know, it's debatable about what's best and what isn't. But I will tell you that, I mean, many of them have lots and lots of sugar. Uh -huh. um, so I, I tend to, you know, and, and some of them use like high fructose corn syrup, I mean, which is a natural sweetener. It's a natural carbohydrate source. Well, you can give an example. I think we can mention that. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, like Gatorade. Uh, I think the, actually their better choice, if you can get to it, is the Gatorade Bolt. That actually uses sea salt. B-O-L-T? Yeah, Bolt, like a lightning bolt. Yep, okay. Um, I think it's much better than the traditional Gatorade. Because it Taste, has less sugar? Less sugar. It's like a considerably less sugar. I mean, you need the carbs, but you don't need as much carbs as was in a traditional can of or bottle of Gatorade. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, at that point, uh, the powder Gatorade, interesting, does use sugar for sweetener, but the bottle pre-made is yeah. always made out of high fructose corn syrup and I, I honestly think that natural sugar is something your body processes better okay um, but but the bolt specifically uses sea salt and actually sweetener from watermelon specifically so it's a very it's about as natural as sugar as you're going to get sure uh, the less calories but plenty of water in there because it's a very watery drink yeah. but it gives you the sea salt and it gives you the other electric Better. And and so with those electrolytes in there, I mean, it's going to help to minimize that. Sure. But, you know, further than that, from a drink, and a lot of people don't think of this, but you see a lot of marathoners and a lot of runners doing it, going to Pedialyte. So oftentimes- Pedialyte. I, Pedialyte. Which is for kids. It's for kids. So babies. I reckon, I, oh, babies yeah. all the time. I mean, when mom and dad come in and baby's dehydrated for whatever reason, yep. it's, it's my go-to choice. But it actually, because there's not a lot of- excess sugar in there and it's got all the good and none of the bad mm -hmm. so it's wow. inexpensive stuff and it works very very effectively for people that are going to be if pedialyte you're gonna, for the adult yep pedialyte for the for adult electrolytes and, and hopefully and they're starting to cramps. market it towards adults and athletes now so sure. they're just kind of starting to tap into that they better that. change the name they, they, maybe they're going to have to <laughs> but but nonetheless it, it's definitely available it's actually really affordable stuff uh, but, you know, the other way, because sometimes you buy in like cases of these sports drinks that can actually get expensive on the sure. pocketbook. So, you know, fruits and veggies. I mean, I'll right. tell you, honeydew, the melon actually works really well. It's got a perfect blend of carbohydrates, potassium, sodium. I mean, it's it's excellent. And it tastes good. And it tastes great. It's excellent after a run or a I workout. I mean, you got to cut it up with a big knife and work at yeah, it that but, way. Yeah, but, but or you, you, know, you just I scoop just out the seeds, get a that. spoon. But you can just spoon it out and just, I mean, and it works great yeah. it's a, as a post exercise or post activity yeah. or even a snack in the middle of the day let's say you're at work and you're working a construction site where you're sweating because it's hot you know go for some melon i mean sure. it works very very effectively mm -hmm. for you and don't forget the water right yeah and very, very plenty very of water plenty. um as far as preventing uh stretches or cramps from stretches i'll have a lot of people if they cramp at night uh I'll do the exact same stretch as we talked about once you get a cramp, but you do them preventatively. Preventive right before bed. Right. So you, you could be laying or lying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Karen, about that. Karen, <laughs> she's our uh, ma English major. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, do well before you go to bed, lay in bed, do this stretch, and you can stretch out your hamstrings if standing, doing the standing stretch on the bed isn't good. Uh, make sure you do pull your uh, ankle back, dorf, dorsiflex it, and you should do that lying down with your knees straight. You'll get a better stretch on those calf muscles um, there. And let's see, calf, uh, that covers all of them. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah so. so it doesn't take a lot. There is one thing I want to say. If you have a lot of calf uh, cramps, oh, yeah. get yourself an incline board. If you do a lot of walking, a lot of running, or even if you want to, it just makes – Calf stretch is easier and it's more effective, I think. Gives you better balance too. Yeah. 
Uh, this is about a 25 degree. You can buy them. 25 degrees is what I feel most, will fit most people because they'll tell you uh, what the degree is. And you put your foot on there, and boy, does that work well. You can just relax. You should do it with a shoe on. It works a lot better, in my opinion. Get a better stretch. You know, hold that for 20 to 30 seconds uh, once or twice before you go to bed or before you run or after you run or walk. Sure. Um, I, you know, actually, I made this one. If you're handy, you can make these for, oh, yeah. you know, if you got some spare Heck, wood around. You made me one, and they work yeah. great. I made my wife one. Bob's son's got one. I, yeah. I mean, they were Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one thing I didn't touch on, too, is with the supplements, salt tablets. Uh, uh, I didn't actually. So there's a variety of different ones. Hammer makes them. Um, Thermotabs. So there's a variety of different ones that also work well. Uh, the key to making those work well, make sure you get plenty of hydration with it too. But they just, they break, they get rid of all the sugars and stuff, but they're just putting the electrolytes in a tablet or a capsule. The one thing that always kind of confused me about this, and I think other people might wonder, if you, what if you're a little height HTN, a little high blood pressure? It's like, I'm not thinking so, of salt yep, tablets. And that's, some, you, yeah, is well, that, and that's an interesting point you bring up because, uh, you know, one of the other causes of people that maybe take diuretics, so that which can make you lose fluid and you lose electrolytes when you're on a diuretic. Yeah, water pills. So yeah. we have to be careful. And why don't we check in with your doctor with just about anything just to make sure or talk with your pharmacist if they know your profile mm -hmm. to make sure that it's going to be safe and effective sure. for you. Yeah. Um, but with respect to a salt tablet, I mean, the, the number one, you know, most when you look at most of the research studies, the byproduct of cramping is usually a lack of sodium. But mm. what do we say to people that have hypertension? Don't use salt yeah, on your food. It's like the so double-edged sword. It is, it is definitely a double-edged sword. Yeah. So I would say work with your physician to make sure that it's appropriate for you to maybe use either a little bit of table salt on your food yeah. or you know, let's say you got a big yard work project that you're going to get done and you know you're going to be perspiring quite a bit. You know, yeah. when we sweat, we lose a lot of our electrolytes. So, and we want to make sure we're keeping you safe. Yeah. I mean, we still want you drinking water. If you can get most of your electrolytes through your diet, it's certainly appropriate. Sure. Some people, when appropriate, can certainly use a salt tablet or the sport drink. So, if I've, they don't have high blood pressure, then it yeah, no it's hypertension not issues. It's not going to be a big issue. If it's well yeah. controlled and on certain medications, it can be appropriate in certain situations. Being more careful when we're on diuretics or the water pill so to speak. Yep. And there's right. several of those out there, but yeah. it, it's something to always work with your doctor, work with your pharmacist yeah. to make sure it's appropriate for sure. you. That always made sense to me once I thought about when you're sweating a lot out in the heat, you know, and that sweat goes, you can just taste oh, the yeah. salt it, in it. it so then I said, oh yeah, maybe we should replace that. And then uh, it does need to be help. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 there's a balance with everything that yeah. we do. Yep. All right, Chris, I think we uh, pretty much hammered everything we needed to. I think so. It's a lot about cramping. Yeah. <laughs> And that, don't cramp your style or mine or whatever. All right, anyways. it's the end of the video, and right. this shoe stinks. Uh, anyways, thanks guys. Take care. Be careful.